Hi everyone, Alex here. Today's cavalry tutorial is all about particles. Hi everyone, today we're diving into particles. There's going to be a lot to learn, but the good news is that all of the particle workflows align seamlessly with the rest of the features throughout Cavalry. So as usual, brand new composition. As with everything in Cavalry, there's a few ways to make everything. You can use the particles button up in the shelf, or you can use the quick add menu, which is control or command and full stop, and just type in particles. I will note though, that if you make it via the shelf, it will automatically make the emitter, which will save you a step. If you make it via the quick add, you're gonna have to do a little bit more setup. For the purpose of today, we'll just click the shelf button. Going via the shelf has created a particle shape and a particle emitter. If you load the particle shape into the attribute editor, there's an attribute here called emitters, and this is where that particle emitter currently is. If you press the plus on the attribute row, you'll see that there's some other emitters in here. You've got the distribution emitter and the JavaScript emitter. We can go into those later, but you will need both an emitter and a particle shape in order for this to work. In the viewport, you should see that you've got this new UI appeared, provided that you've got show drawables on in your viewport settings. This is representing the particle emitter. Particle is going to emit from this space within the emitter. Okay, so I'm going to press play just so you can see what's happening. This is where it might get a little bit difficult to explain, but it will make sense once you've started using it. On a particle shape, we've got gravity, turbulence, drag force, mass. We're controlling the general physics of the particles. Gravity at the moment is turned up to 9.8 and the direction is pointing downwards. So the particles are falling down, but you're probably wondering why are they going up? That's happening on the particle emitter. That can be controlled via the initial direction on the particle emitter. So if you load the particle emitter and then just turn this dial, we're shooting those particles out in a different direction. And then the gravity is making them fall again. So the emitter is controlling the initial output of particles and the particle shape is controlling what happens afterwards. So quick example, if on the emitter, I'm gonna change the emitter shape to point, so it's a single direction, and I'm just gonna increase the speed to 20, so initial speed underneath initial direction. And you see it's projected them out a little bit further because the initial speed is higher. As with everything, if you were to right click initial direction, add behavior, random, all of the particles are projected in a random direction. Let me just undo that random. Now, we've already seen the emitter shape at the top of the emitter here. We set this to point a minute ago. We can change this to circle, so it'll emit from a circle or from a square, but you can also use an input shape or an input shape perimeter, which is the path of a shape. So let's go with input shape for now, and we'll quickly create an ellipse. Let's shrink that down to about 50. Select the particle emitter, drag the ellipse shape onto that input shape, which is now undimmed. Now when you press play, the particles will emit from that ellipse. Let me just put the ellipse at the bottom so you can see. And this is cool, but it's not really doing anything different yet other than it's an ellipse. But if we were to select the ellipse shape, right click position, add behavior, noise, and we'll go for something like a minimum of minus 500, maximum of 500. And now you can see that the particles are emitting from wherever that ellipse is on the screen. At the moment, it doesn't look all that natural because the particles are just going out in one direction and falling down. Let me just increase the time scale to 1.5 on the noise just to make it a little bit faster for this next bit. And let's go back to the particle emitter. And we're going to change initial speed to zero so that particles just fall out of the ellipse. And then we're going to check this box here that says use emitter velocity. And when we check that, the particles will emit in the direction that the ellipse is traveling. So they'll spew out as it goes one angle and then turn the other way as it goes back the other way. Forgive my terminology about all of this. <laughs> now, the particle emitter is also controlling how many particles are being output. There's a maximum particles attribute here. And we could change this to something like 10,000 and it will output more, but you won't really tell until you increase the rate. So let's change the rate to 1000, and we're spewing out way, way more particles. This next bit might take a little bit to get your head around, but it's quite simple once you understand it. 
So we've got a rate of 1000 and a duration of one, which means that we're outputting 1000 particles for every one second. And you might think, how do I know that? Like, there's no way of telling. There is, if I press pause, go back to the start, on the particle shape, there is a number of particles attribute at the bottom of the attribute editor here. Currently it says zero, because there's no particles on the screen. Second I press play, we're on a 25 FPS scene. So by 25 FPS, this will say 1000. So if we watch it here, press play, pause at 30. We got to 30 frames and we've got 1183 particles. Okay, so let's start fresh with a brand new set of particles. This time, I'm gonna change the lifespan, which is how long a particle will last for. Currently, it's five seconds. I'm just gonna change this to 15 so that we can see one particle for a bit longer. I'm also going to change the gravity to zero. And on the particle emitter, I'm gonna change initial speed to zero as well. And when we press play, particles just spawn in and stop. So I'm also gonna control or command full stop and create a new background shape. I'm gonna put that to the back. I'm gonna change the color to black. And we're gonna open a particle emitter, set emitter shape to input shape, and we'll use the background shape this time. And now particles is gonna spawn across your entire composition. You might be thinking, uh, this doesn't look all that interesting. What's the point? If we go onto the particle shape, we can go onto the visual tab, and then we could increase the particle radius just so you can see what the particles actually look like. We can also change the shape style here. We can change to a rectangle if we wanted, or you can put another input shape just like you could with the emitter. We can also change how the particles spawn in because currently they're just sort of popping onto the screen and we don't want that. So to change that, we'll go to scale over lifespan, select the graph, and we've got a couple of curves here. So I'm gonna select the bell curve and now they're gonna grow in instead of just burst in. They'll also fade back out as well to nothing. You'll also be able to affect rotation here if you're using something like a rectangle shape where you can see that. So you've got the start rotation and then it's rotation over lifespan. So if these were both zero, it won't rotate at all. So it's starting at zero. Rotation over lifespan, we're gonna tell it to go to 360 as it was and that's gonna spin 360 degrees over the entire lifespan. And the lifespan is what we set earlier on the shape tab of the particle shape. So let's just put the particle shapes input shape back to an ellipse. You'll probably have noticed this color over lifespan. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically it's going to start its lifespan as purple and its lifespan as green. So we've got 15 seconds. At zero seconds, it's purple. 15 seconds, it'll be green. And of course, you can change these to whatever you want. We can make these go from white to red. And we can even change the transparency so they start to fade out. Right, now let's move on to something a little bit different. Let's go for shape on a particle shape tab. And we'll go down to modifiers. I'm going to right click modifier. And I'm going to add a flow field modifier. Instantly, you'll see in now we've got some motion. Particles are following a flow field and you can edit the flow field down here on the flow field modifier. For example, if I increase the force magnitude, you'll see that the particles are gonna follow a much straighter path through the flow field. And if we lower it, it's back to normal. You can also add fall offs here. So if we add a fall off, only things within the fall off. Let me set drawables to always on. Only particles within the fall off will follow a flow field, or they should. And the playback loop started again, so we just need to wait to fill the scene with some more particles again. Yep, as you can see, particles are only flowing inside the fall off. This is gonna work for all of the modifiers. I'm not gonna go into every modifier today because it's gonna be a really long video. And I'm thinking that maybe each modifier I'll do a single video for to explain it fully. But for now, I'm going to kill this fall off. And I'm going to go back to the particle emitter. And I'm going to lower the rate to about 25. Just so that we see less particles on screen. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press control or command full stop. And I'm going to create trails. And on the trails, I'm going to put the particle shape as the input shape and instantly let's change this trail stroke color to white so you can see them 
and we'll increase the length but the trails are now outputting a trail from each particle the playback keeps looping i just really need to just increase the length of the scene so that we can see what we're doing one sec da, 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 da. here we go so these should play back a little bit longer so that we can actually see what we're doing this is where you really start to see the interconnectivity of cavalry's workflows and how every layer can connect to another layer and so on let me just note quickly on the trails stroke tab at the bottom there's a attribute called use particle color and this will fade the stroke in with each of the particles colors right then let me delete those trails and i'm going to create something like a star and we'll color it bright orange I'm going to duplicate this star. So with the star selected, press the duplicator button. And on the duplicator, there's a new distribution called particle. And if we put our particle shape as the input shape for this, those stars are now projected on all of those particles. Right, let me just lower the radius of these stars to about 10, press play. And you can see that the stars are nicely distributed where each particle would be spawning or is spawning. Another cheeky tip here, let me delete the star and a duplicator. If you were to create a connect shape via the quick add menu, we'll make the stroke white on here and then change target distribution to particles, add the particle shape as the input shape. We'll change source distribution on the connect shape to random and we'll set the random width to the same size as the comp so you can see what's happening. And then when you press play, the connect shape is searching for all of those particles. And it's just a super cool thing that cavalry can do. All right, so I'm going to leave this one here for today. Just as a brief introduction to how particles work, some of the workflows that you can use to get yourself started. And then I'm going to try over the next few weeks. And what I'll do is I'll do a tutorial just on the flow field modifier, just on the visual modifier and go through each utility one at a time and introduce you to them all individually. As always, if there's any particular tutorial that you'd like to see that you don't think is out there already, then just leave a message, get in touch, and I'll see what I can do to get that sorted out for you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. I know nothing. I